The death of George Floyd has reignited the discussion of racial inequity in the U.S. and part of that discussion is the phrase Black Lives Matter. Now some have countered that phrase with another one, All Lives Matter. Although only one word is different, it sends a very different message to black people. Now, Times Picayune, New Orleans Advocate columnist Will Sutton penned a powerful column in today's paper and on NOLA.com explaining why. Katie Moore had an extensive conversation with him today. I think there are a couple things that uh, make a difference when we're talking about these things and when we're writing about things. One is personal experiences that people can connect to. Mm -hmm. uh, they may not have had the specific experience that you have had, but if you're able to have someone take the time and listen, and they understand that you have a migraine headache, even if they've had a number of headaches throughout all their years, but they've never had a migraine, they have some sense of what you've experienced, and you don't want to hear that, well, a bunch of people have migraine headaches. I haven't had a migraine headache. Why would that be so bad? That's not what you want to hear. You want to hear that you're sorry that I have a migraine headache. Can I do anything to help you? Can I get you something? You don't want them to have a migraine headache. You want them to have some empathy. And if they have the time and care and consideration, you want them to at least offer help to be of assistance. And I think that's at the core what this Black Lives Matter is about. I don't think there's a person who could say that they believe 100% in everything that the Black Lives Matter organization is doing. But for me, that's like faith. How many of us are a part of whatever faith, religion, and we actually can say we agree 100%? We don't. We agree in the concepts. We agree in what it means overall. And it's meaningful and it's a connection for us. And we're willing to accept some things that are a little out of sync with what we feel. And hopefully over time, as we take a faith walk, we're getting closer to where we need to be. When you hear people saying, um, you know, posting things about all lives matter and feeling, saying that they're feeling that they don't want to be exclusionary like they think that the black community has been all of these years, why is it still offensive to hear that? It's offensive because Black Lives Matters really is more about can you see me? Can you see us? Do you care? No one that I have seen in the Black Lives Organization, the Black Lives Movement, or being supportive and using the Black Lives Matter language is saying anything derogatory about other people other races, other ethnicities, other belief systems. I, I, I don't see that. And if, if there is such a thing, I believe that those folks who created it, those folks like me who have come to it, uh, that, that we can make it very clear that that is not what we're talking about. So it's really important that we recognize that when we say Black Lives Matter, we're talking about more focus on an area of pain and hurt and frustration. So all lives may matter, but is everybody feeling this pain? Recently, uh, some months ago, we had those bad tornadoes in Ruston. Ruston came up with Ruston Strong. It, it, it didn't mean New Orleans isn't strong or Baton Rouge isn't strong. It's rusting and it's strong and going to get through this. And if you're an ally, come and help us. We need help. In, That's what the difference is with Black Lives Matter. In your column, you mentioned a, that you wanted to talk about some of those personal anecdotes. And one of them was you bringing groceries to your apartment. And you had to park across the street. 
and um, you said that you know you were concerned because a police officer was in the area um, and uh, you know came up to you. Can you describe for people what that experience was like for you? You ended it by saying that you could breathe again after you were able to go into your apartment. I don't think that's something that a lot of people um, who have not experienced it can fully grasp. It was a very scary situation. Um, literally, there was no one else on the street except the two of us, no one. So there was nobody I could signal to, no one I could say uh, help, uh, there was no one home. Um, and I'm crossing the street on the sidewalk and then walking up the walk to the doorway and the officer literally rushes over to me, his hand on his holster gun and starts questioning me and I'm wondering what the problem is because this is where I live and I have groceries. I'm going into the place, I'm not breaking into the place, I had no weapon, and I'm treated as a suspect based on what? And it was a scary situation because I had things in my hands. I wasn't able to kind of quickly and easily free my hands so I could show that I didn't have anything. Uh, it was scary because I was about to reach for my key and I didn't know if I could reach for my key. I uh, asked for permission to reach for my key so I could show him that I indeed have a key and I can open the door to go in because it's where I live. And he, once I, he let me bring up the key, that wasn't the end of it. He wanted to see me open that door so I could prove to him that it was where I lived. And it was only then that he said, thank you for your time, and then left. But uh, that was a very, very scary situation. And I want to emphasize that that's one of a number of things that have happened to me. And I know that there are a lot of other men, black men, and particularly black boys and young black men, who have had experiences far more harrowing uh, than that. Our thanks to you, Will Sutton, for that interview, and we'll be right back with a look at weather and sports.